Here is our first story today. Room on the Broom by Julia Donaldson, illustrated by Axel Schiffler. This is kind of a fun one because it's a rhymy one. The witch had a cat and a hat that was black, a long ginger and long ginger hair, and a brain down her back. Oh, that none of that made sense. I should go back and I'm gonna start again. All right. The witch had a cat and a hat that was black, and long ginger hair and a braid down her back. How the cat purred and how the witch grinned as they sat on their broomstick and flew through the wind. But how the witch hailed and how the cat spat when the wind blew so wildly it blew off her hat. Down, cried the witch, and they flew to the ground. They searched for the hat, but no hat could be found. Then out of the bushes, on thundering paws, there bounded a dog with a hat in his jaws. He dropped it politely and then eagerly said, as the witch put the hat firmly down on her head, I am a dog, as keen as can be. Is there room on the broom for a dog like me? Yes, cried the witch, and the dog clambered on. The witch tapped the broomstick and whoosh, they were gone. What did she lose this time? Her bow. Her bow. Over the fields and the forest they flew. The dog wagged his tail and the stormy wind blew. The witch laughed out loud and held out her hat and held on her hat, but away blew the bow from the braid just like that. Down, cried the witch, and they flew to the ground. They searched for the bow, but no bow could be found. Then out of a tree, with an ear splitting shriek, there flapped a green bird with a bow on her beak. She dropped it politely and bent her head low, then said as the witch tied the braid to her bow, I am a bird, as green as can be. Is there room on the broom for a bird like me? Yes, cried the witch. So the bird fluttered on, the witch tapped the broomstick, and whoosh, they were gone. Over the reeds and the rivers they flew, the bird shrieked of glee, and the stormy wind blew. What did she lose this time? Her wand. Her wand. They shot through the sky to the back and be of beyond. The witch clutched her bow, but let go of her wand. Down, cried the witch, and they flew to the ground. They searched for the wand, but no wand could be found. Then all of a sudden, out of the pond, leaped a dripping wet frog with a dripping wet wand. He dropped it politely, then said with a croak. As the witch dried her wand on the fold of her cloak, I am a frog. As clean as can be, is there room on the broom for a frog like me? Yes, said the witch, so the frog bounded on. The witch tapped the broomstick and whoosh they were gone. Over the moors and the mountains they flew. The frog jumped for joy. The broom snapped in half. Down fell the cat and the dog and the frog. Down they went tumbling into a bog. The witch's half broomstick flew into a cloud. And the witch heard a roar that was scary and loud. I'm a dragon as mean as can be, and the witch with french fries tastes delicious to me. No, cried the witch, flying higher and higher. The dragon flew after her, breathing out fire. Help, cried the witch, flying down to the ground. She looked all around, but no help could be found. The dragon drew near with glint in his eyes and said, just this once, I'll have witch without fries. But just as he planned to begin on his feast, from out of the ditch arose a horrible beast. It was tall, dark, and sticky, and feathered and furred. It had four frightful heads and had wings like a bird. And its terrible voice, when it started to speak, was a yowl and a growl and a croak and a shriek. It dripped and it squelched and it strode from the ditch and it said to the dragon, Buzz off! That's my witch! Does that look scary? Yeah. No. Does he look scared? Yeah. Yeah. Oopsie. Did I rip something? 
The dragon drew back and he started to shake. I'm sorry, he sputtered. I made a mistake. It's nice to have met you, but I must now fly. For as he spread out his wings and off through the sky. Then down flew the bird and down jumped the frog and down climbed the cat and whoo, said the dog. And thank you, oh thank you, the grateful witch cried. Without you, I'd be in that dragon's inside. You can see that dragon way up there. Then she filled up the cauldron and said with a grin, Find something, everyone. Throw something in. So the frog found a lily, and the cat found a cone, and the dog bird found a twig, and the dog found a bone. And they threw it all in, and the witch stirred them well, and while she was stirring, she muttered a spell. Iggity, ziggity, zaggity, zoom. Then out rose. Ooh, looks like some real magic, huh? A truly magnificent broom with seats for the witch and the cat and the dog, a nest for the bird and a pool for the frog. Yes, cried the witch, and they all clambered on. The witch tapped the broomstick and whoosh, they were gone. Need a little bath there for him, huh? All right. Let's go ahead and do one more real quick. Doreen Cronin and Betsy Lewin. Click, clack, boo. A tricky treat. Farmer Brown does not like Halloween. Witches give him nightmares. Pirates give him shivers. Jack-o'-lanterns flicker spooky shadows on the wall. Farmer Brown leaves a bowl of candy on the porch. He puts up a do not disturb sign. He draws the shades and locks the doors. But in the barn, the Halloween party has just begun. It says prizes, most candy eaten, scariest boo, loudest scream, best costume. There is a crunch, crunch, crunching as the mice squirry, scurry across the field. There is a creak, creak, creaking as the sheep slowly push open the barn door. And there is a tap, tap, tapping, and the cows go to the window to let the cats in. Farmer Brown does not like the sounds of Halloween night. He checks the lock on the door. He peeks through the window. There is a dark creature standing beneath the trees. Farmer Brown runs to his room, pulls on his pajamas, and climbs under the covers. He hears the crunch, crunch, crunching of leafy footsteps heading towards the house. There is a creak, creak, creaking on the old boards of the front porch. And there is a tap, tap, tapping on the front door. Farmer Brown pulls up his covers tight. He hears a quack, quack, quackle in the crisp night air. Quackle? Farmer Brown jumps out of bed. The porch is empty. The candy bowl is gone. There's a new note on the Farmer Brown's door. Halloween party at the barn. Farmer Brown runs to the barn. There is a creak, creak, creaking on the old boards of the front porch and a crunch, crunch, crunching of leafy footsteps heading towards the barn. And there's a tap, tap, tapping on the window. Who's tapping on the window? Farmer Brown. Farmer Brown. Oh, who's this? A duck. A duck. And he has best costume. Happy Halloween! And I guess he gave Farmer Brown the costume prize. So there's some other books. Um, and I don't have the books, but we can read them later, or we can watch them later. It's, uh, click, clack, moo, cows that type. And click, clack, quack about the duck who learns how to type. So it's kind of funny how the animals communicate with Farmer Brown using an old typewriter. Okay, so here's our stories. And yes.